हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न पेपर नंबर टू साइंस पेपर नंबर टू एंड लेसन नंबर टू एंड नेम ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इज देयर लाइफ प्रोसेसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम पार्ट फर्स्ट लाइफ प्रोसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम पार्ट फर्स्ट सो इन दिस डिफरेंट लाइफ प्रोसेसेस वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न व्हिच आर द नेसेसरी लाइफ प्रोसेसेस आफ्टर दैट some questions as a introduction in the introduction we are going to learn some questions their answers we are going to find so first of all in the introductory part or in the introduction of the lesson some questions are asked which are that questions first question is that how are the food stuffs and their contents are useful for the body so food stuffs we are eating and that food stuffs are useful for the human beings or for you these are useful for the all living organisms and how these food stuffs are useful so food stuffs they are used for getting energy food stuffs are used for get, for the growth of the body and uh, that food material after digestion it is used for the repair of the body and uh, there are three functions of that particular food stuffs first function is the growth of the body second one is the repair of the body and third one is the obtaining energy for different processes so second question is there in case of the uh, introductory fact first in that second question importance of the balanced diet what is the importance of the balanced diet so you are learning from the fifth standard onwards balanced diet balanced diet then what is mean by the balanced diet so what is the balanced diet so diet which provides all the necessary all the essential food nutrients essential food nutrients for the body in a right proportion so what is mean by balanced diet the diet which provides all the necessary nutrients for the body and these nutrients should be in a right proportion in a specific proportion then you can say your diet is balanced so which are the nutrients which nutrients we are getting the food stuff from the food stuffs so these nutrients are there first one is their carbohydrates second one is the proteins third one is their fats fourth one is their vitamins fifth one is their minerals so carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals these are the nutrients and these nutrients we are getting from the food stuffs after digestion so third question is there so what is the third question what are the functions of the muscles present in the body in the body so inside our body so many muscles are present and these muscles are most important so what is their function that one will see in case of the movement of the body body movement is possible due to the muscles you are uh, Uh, you can uh, run you can jump you can walk you can move from one place to another place you can bend your knee you can bend your hands you can do any work due to that particular movement and that movement of the body is the function of the muscles okay and total that organism is also moving from one place to another place movement is the function of the function of that particular muscles so fourth question is that what is the importance of the digestive juices present in the digestive system so in the digestive system many digestive juices are there and which that digestive juices are there in that uh, digestive glands are there and that digestive glands they are secreting that digestive juices in that first one is the salivary gland salivary gland is secreting saliva second thing is the liver liver is secreting bile juice after that pancreas are there pancreas is secreting pancreatic juice and in inner lining of the stomach it is secreting gastric juices gastric glands are there so how many uh, glands are there digestive glands are there inside the digestive system salivary gland is there liver is there then pancreas is there and gastric glands these are the glands and what is the function of these glands these glands are secreting digestive juices and because of that 
it has become or it becomes easy for digestion of the food so due to the digestive disease food get digested easily very fastly so after that fifth question is there what is the fifth question the which system is in action for the removal of the nitrogenous waste or for the removal of the waste materials from the body so inside the human body or inside the any living organism there is one system and that system is helping to remove excretory waste or waste material from the body these are removed these are thrown out of the body and for that one system is working and that system is there excretory system in that kidneys are there we have seen kidneys are involved into the excretory system and the uh, next sixth question is there what is the role what is the role of the circulatory system in the energy production so circulatory system it is related to the blood circulation it is related to the internal organ heart so heart is the pumping organ and it is helping to circulate blood throughout the body through the arteries and through the veins but what is the function of that particular circulatory system so circulatory system is having two functions two major functions are there first one is the supply or transportation of the digested food and transportation of the oxygen to the cells and tissues so oxygen and digested food is supplied to the cells and tissues with the help of the circulatory system with the help of the blood and the next thing is there blood circulatory system is also helping to remove the nitrogenous waste out of the body and that blood is carrying nitrogenous waste to the kidneys and after that kidneys are filtering that particular blood and after that filtration is converted into urine uric acid so up to that next question is that question number 7 in that how various processes occurring in the living organism these are controlled and in how many ways these are controlled so various life processes which are occurring into the human body or into the body of any organism these life processes are controlled with the help of two things first one is their nervous control is there nervous system is there and that nervous system is helping to control to keep control on all the various processes happening inside the body occurring inside the body and as well as chemical control is there in that chemical control enzymes are there and hormones are there and these enzymes and hormones they are helping to control all the functions of the body all the processes so nervous control nervous system is there and chemical control is there hormones and enzymes these are helping for coordinating that different body functions after this after this next point we are going to learn this up to this we have studied that introductory part because these points we have studied in previous standards so first point in this lesson we are going to study living organisms and life processes what is the point living organisms living organisms and uh, life processes living organisms and uh, life processes so we have seen why we are seeing these organisms as a living because they are showing some characteristics and which characteristic they are showing they are doing respiration they are doing uh, excretion they are involving they are uh, having digestive system again they are showing uh, digestion respiration excretion they are showing circulation they are showing growth so all these things they are showing reproduction these are the characters of the living organisms and in case of the living organisms various life processes are essential various life processes are essential in that point wise we are going to learn first point is there various systems are continuously working in the human body what is the first point various different systems are working inside the body and these systems are control or these are continuously working 
throughout the life so these are called as a life processes so which are these systems or which are these life processes these are digestive system respiratory system circulatory system excretory system and uh, chemical control and uh, coordination is there control and coordination these are the different skeletal system will be there nervous system is there so all these life processes all these systems are working together inside the body and third point is there in case of the various systems or various life processes are occurring inside the human body and in that some internal organs as well as some external organs these are involved internal organs or external organs these are also involved into the various life processes fourth point is there in that these systems are working in all living organisms not only in human beings these systems are working in all living organisms and the last one is there to carry out all that functions to carry out all these life processes energy is necessary what is necessary energy is necessary and that energy is obtained from the food when you are eating the food that food is digested and after digestion that energy is obtained in the form of ATP so sixth point we are going to study and that point is there energy is harvested by the mitochondria from the carbohydrates fats and lipids so whatever mitochondria are present in the cell and that mitochondria are called as a powerhouse of the cell and these mitochondria are helping or they are harvesting they are uh, obtaining they are producing energy from the digested food carbohydrates fats and uh, lipids after that seven point is there and in that seven point along with food for the production of energy along with food oxygen is also necessary for the production of energy not only food but oxygen is also necessary for the production of the food and the uh, eighth point is there that digested food and oxygen these are transported to all the tissues and uh, muscles all the tissues and cells the digested food and oxygen these are transported to the tissues and cells with the help of blood with the help of blood and uh, by the blood circulatory system circulatory system is helping to transport these materials and ninth point is there in that all life processes for all life processes these are helping they are contributing they are, they are uh, taking part into the energy production and the tenth point is there for these life processes energy is necessary so these points we will see first point is there in case of the life processes in the living organisms in that various systems are working various systems various systems are working in human body human body second thing is there which systems are there digestive then a circulatory digestive system circulatory system excretory system then a skeletal system is there skeletal skeletal system is there digestive system respiratory system circulatory system skeletal system a respiratory system is there respiratory system all these systems or all these processes these are working inside the human body and the next thing is the third point in the third point these systems are working in all living organisms these systems are present these systems are present in all living organisms living organisms so fourth point is there in that fourth point to carry out all these body functions properly energy source of energy is necessary to carry out to carry out all functions properly 
energy sources are necessary energy sources are necessary energy sources are necessary fifth point is that so energy is harvested with the help of or energy is harvested by mitochondria present inside the cell so energy is produced or harvested harvested means produced by mitochondria who is producing energy mitochondria are producing energy but from whom they are producing energy from carbohydrates fats and lipids from these sources from these materials from these nutrients energy is obtained by the mitochondria seventh point is there because of the seventh point along with oxygen along with food oxygen is also necessary for energy production food and o2 are necessary for energy production energy production food and oxygen these are necessary for energy production and next thing is there this digested food and uh, oxygen is supplied to cells and tissues with the help of blood circulatory system so food and o2 are supplied to cells and uh, tissues by blood with the help of blood circulatory system circulatory system with the help of blood circulatory system ninth point is that so in case of the ninth point all life processes these are taking part they are contributing into the energy production all life processes work together for energy production energy production now next tenth point is that in case of the tenth point for these life processes energy is necessary these life processes these are not happening automatically for that for all life processes for all life processes energy is necessary energy is necessary so these 10 points are there and after this so these 10 points are most important in case of the study so while doing study you have to read each and every line from the lesson and you have to understand each and every line from the lesson and if you will understand each and every line from the lesson if you will do micro study you can give all the answers which all the answer based on that question based on that paragraph so you have to study carefully you have to go through line wise line to line so next point after this we are going to learn and that point is their nutrients and their sources next point is their nutrients and their sources nutrients and their sources nutrients and their sources so nutrients and their sources we are going to learn next point is there nutrients and uh, their sources So next point is their nutrients and their sources. So in case of the nutrients and the sources, we have studied what do you mean by nutrients and which are the nutrients. So first thing is their human and all animals they consume fruits and vegetables. So which are the nutrients? Before this, we'll see what is the nutrients. Which are the nutrients? And these nutrients are there. These are 
carbohydrates nutrients are there carbohydrates carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and uh, minerals these are the nutrients and uh, these nutrients are necessary for the energy production for the growth of the body and for the repair of the body so nutrients in that point we will see nutrients and their sources in that human beings and all animals they consume fruits and vegetables humans and all animals consume fruits and vegetables so we are eating fruits and vegetables and from that fruits and vegetables we are getting nutrients different nutrients so second point is there in that second point plants these are autotrophs plants are autotrophs human beings and animals are heterotrophs and uh, autotrophs are producing their own food and that plants are autotrophs they are producing their own food and uh, whatever food they are producing some part of the food they are using for themselves and remaining part of the food they are storing into the roots into the fruits into the grains into the stem so in the fruit root stem again uh, into the roots they are storing the excess food and these parts leaves also in the leaves also that excess food is stored and these parts are consumed by human beings and other animals so what you can say plants are autotrophs why they are autotrophs because they can produce their own food and uh, excess food excess food produced produced by plants is stored is stored in roots in fruits in a stem in the leaves okay so in root fruit stem and in the leaves these food is stored excess food is stored okay after this next thing is there we are getting nutrients carbohydrate proteins fats vitamins from the plants so what you can say plant plants are the source for all nutrients plants are the main source for all nutrients after this next thing is there which are the nutrients and which are their sources which are their sources fourth point is there in that carbohydrates carbohydrates so carbohydrates these are called as a macronutrients these are called as a macronutrients why macronutrients because these carbohydrates are used for the production of energy and most of the food materials we are consuming and they can they are containing carbohydrate most of the energy we are getting from the carbohydrates so which are the sources of carbohydrate and that sources we are going to learn milk is there fruits are there jaggery is there potato is there sweet potato is there vegetables are there wheat is there rice is there maize is there jowar is there so millet bajra so which are the sources in that uh, milk is there sugar is there jagger is there jagger is there up to that uh, rice is there wheat maize rice is there wheat is there maize is there then uh, bajra is there bajra as well as uh, fruits are there vegetables are there fruits vegetables 
and these are the sources of that particular carbohydrate so all these food materials and maximum we are eating rice wheat sugar these materials we are eating we are consuming okay so after this next thing is there jawar is also included in this and of fifth point is there we are consuming large amount of carbohydrate so it is called as a macro macro means more and micro means less so carbohydrates will need in large amount so it is called as a macronutrients and uh, we get 4 kilo calorie of energy we get 4 kilo calorie of energy from 1 gram of carbohydrate we get 4 kilo calorie of energy from 1 gram of carbohydrates 1 gram of carbohydrates we are getting 4 kilo calorie of energy per gram of carbohydrate so these points are necessary in this nutrients which are the nutrients carbohydrate proteins fats vitamins minerals so humans and all animals they are consuming fruits and vegetables they are eating plant parts in that plants are the autotrophs and the, they are producing food for themselves and remaining food they are storing excess food they are storing produced by the plants it is stored into the roots fruit stem in the leaves and these parts were eating vegetable parts plants are main source for the nutrients all the nutrients and carbohydrates in that uh, carbohydrates are called as a macronutrients and sources of carbohydrates are their milk sugar jaggery rice wheat maize bajra fruit vegetables then jawar is there all these are the uh, foodstuffs and from these we are getting large amount of carbohydrate and we get 4 kilo calorie of that for the energy from the 1 gram of carbohydrate and after this one more question is asked into the textbook and that question is there use your brain power and uh, in that what is the question after this next question is there and that question is there use your brain power and that use your brain power in that one question is asked and that question is related to the sport players sport players so question is there why players they are consuming food food stuffs while playing while playing that players are eating that particular food materials or food stuffs all the times why they are consuming when they are getting time and time they are eating they are taking glucon also they are taking glucon also they are taking getting food stuffs why but a question answer is there while playing when players are playing that energy is utilized to carry out that particular functions all the movements of the body and that energy goes on decreasing and uh, for the production of that energy digested food is utilized it is oxidized that food is oxidized with the help of oxygen and a uh, more amount of energy is produced but uh, that energy goes on decreasing and to maintain that energy to maintain that energy to remain fit to remain enthusiastic so they are eating that particular food materials food stuffs continuously when they are getting the break during the break they are eating food stuffs so can you recall in that question is asked what is the uh, uh, replace or a respiration question is there what is mean by respiration and how does it occurs so next question is there what is meant by respiration what is meant by respiration in case of the respiration we have studied before this definition that respiration is a process of production of energy from the digested food with the help of oxygen what is the respiration respiration is the process of production of energy from the digested food with the help of oxygen the process of the process of production of energy 
process of production of energy from digested food from digested food with the help of with the help of oxygen to the help of oxygen so respiration is the process of production of energy from the digested food and uh, with the help of oxygen so and after that how does it occurs for that we have studied respiratory system in that respiratory system what do you mean by respiration also we have studied so up to this this is the definition of respiration and uh, after this so we are going to learn in detail how the energy production takes place so respiration this definition was studied after this next part we are going to learn and that one is the living organisms and energy production next part is the living organisms and energy production <coughs> living organisms and uh, energy production living organisms and energy production how that living organisms are producing energy so production of energy we have studied before this you have studied respiratory system so in that uh, suppose you will take here will be mouth here will be in case of the respiratory system this one is the respiratory system so in case of the respiratory system here will be nose here will be mouth and this mouth and nose they are having common opening they are having common opening and after that here food pipe will go like this way and this will be wind pipe so this one will be trachea or also you can say wind pipe after that trachea get divided trachea get divided so this trachea get divided into two and this one will be these two these are bronchus bronchus and after that many branches are arising from this many branches small branches are arising and these are called as a bronchioles bronchioles and at last inside the liver sorry inside the lungs these two are the lungs and in the lungs small sac like structures are and these small sac like structures are called as a alveoli alveoli where exchange of gases takes place alveoli in that exchange of gases takes place so in this which which parts are there in the circulatory system uh, sorry in the respiratory system in that and here will be diaphragm here will be here will be diaphragm so in the respiratory system different parts are involved in that nose is there mouth is there after that this one is trachea and here it will be larynx and above larynx there will be pharynx so pharynx and larynx larynx here it will be like this way oh. so this adam's apple there will be larynx so up to this next thing is there to the next thing is that in that trachea trachea means quid pipe through which that air is going into the lungs so these are the lungs this one is the lungs 
so in case of the respiratory system if a diagram will pass diagram will be given and the boxes will be given and you have to do the names into the boxes you have to fill that boxes and uh, like this way boxes will be there and you have to fill that boxes so after this next thing we are going to learn how that energy production takes place in case of the living organisms so respiration occurs at two levels respiration occurs occurs at two levels respiration it is occurring at two levels which are that two levels we will see first level is the body level first level is the body level body level respiration body level respiration and in case of the body level respiration two things are involved in this in the body level respiration inhalation and here exhalation inhalation and exhalation inhalation in that O2 is taken O2 is taken in lungs and exhalation CO2 is given out of lungs so in the body level respiration inhalation and exhalation takes place and <coughs> after that in that also exchange of gases takes place in the alveoli so where exchange of gases these are the alveoli and these are the cyclic structures present inside the lungs and these that cyclic or small round shaped structures are there these are called alveoli and function of the alveoli is there exchange of gases exchange of O2 and CO2 so this one body level respiration is there and after that next respiration is there cellular level respiration cellular level respiration so in case of the cellular level respiration which things are involved in that cellular, respira cellular level respiration food is oxidized food is oxidized food is oxidized and energy is released and that food stuffs are oxidized with the help of two ways there are two ways to oxidize the food stuffs to harvest the energy to produce the energy and in that again in cellular respiration there are two types first one is there aerobic respiration and the second one is there and aerobic aerobic and anaerobic respiration respiration so a aerobic respiration in that oxygen is involved oxygen is involved and an and aerobic respiration in that it takes place without the help of oxygen without the help of oxygen so after this we are going to learn about cellular respiration next point is there cellular respiration body level respiration inhalation exhalation we have studied so cellular respiration in that types we are going to discuss and which processes takes place that one we have to discuss so <clears throat> next thing is the cellular respiration cellular respiration in that cellular respiration there are two types we have studied in that aerobic respiration is there aerobic and here and aerobic respiration aerobic respiration in that aerobic respiration O2 is involved O2 is involved and here without O2 without oxygen so in the production of energy from the digested food with the help of oxygen it is called as a aerobic respiration and here production of energy from the digested food without the help of oxygen it is called as a anaerobic respiration 
So in case of the <coughs> aerobic respiration, it takes place in three steps. Aerobic respiration takes place in three steps. In that uh, three steps are there. In that uh, which steps are there? First step is there. Glycolysis. First step is there. Glycolysis. Glycolysis. So in case of the glycolysis, it is also called as a EMP pathway. It is also called as a EMP pathway. So what is meant by EMP pathway? MB10. MB10. This one is there. Meyer Hoff. Meyer Hoff and this one is there. Pernas pathway. MB10, Meyer Hoff and Pernas pathways. So three scientists. Embedden was one scientist, Meyerhoff was another scientist, and Parnas. So the two is called as Embedden, Meyerhoff, Parnas pathway. So EMP pathway. So in that uh, glycolysis, which process takes place? In the glycolysis, it occurs into the cytoplasm. So in this glycolysis, we'll study points. In that first point is there, occurs, it occurs in cytoplasm it occurs in cytoplasm second thing is that in the glycolysis glucose molecule is oxidized stepwise in the glycolysis glucose is oxidized stepwise glucose molecule is oxidized in stepwise and in that from the glucose molecule following things are produced two molecules of pyrogacid two molecules of atp two molecules of nadh2 and two molecules of h2o these are produced in the glycolysis which things are produced two molecules of each two molecules of pyruvic acid two molecules of atp two atp two molecules of nadh2 two molecules of NADH2 and uh, two molecules of H2 these are produced so in the glycolysis glycolysis occurs into the cytoplasm of the cell in the glycolysis glucose is oxidized stepwise in the first step two molecules of pyruvic acid two molecules of ATP two molecules of NADH2 and two molecules of H2 are produced so again this pyruvic acid is oxidized pyruvic acid is again converted into acetyl coenzyme A pyruvic acid is again converted into converted into acetyl coenzyme A acetyl coenzyme A and this acetyl coenzyme A now it will enter or it will get converted into this acetyl coenzyme is oxidized and that acetyl coenzyme A is converted into two molecules of NADH2 and two molecules of CO2 so it is converted into two molecules of NADH2 and two molecules of CO2 so one more time see Aerobic respiration is there, anaerobic respiration is there. Aerobic respiration takes place in presence of oxygen. Production of energy from the digested food with the help of oxygen is called as aerobic respiration. Here anaerobic respiration, production of energy from digested food without the help of oxygen it is called as anaerobic. And aerobic respiration takes place in three steps. And in that first step is there glycolysis. First step is there glycolysis and glycolysis is also called as a EMP pathway so in the glycolysis three four points are there first point is there it occurs into the cytoplasm of the cell second thing is the glucose is stepwise oxidized in the glyco uh, in the glycolysis in the first step 
टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ पायरिक एसिड टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एटीपी टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एन एस टू एंड टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एच टू आर प्रोड्यूस नाउ इन द सेकंड स्टेप पायरुक एसिड इज कन्वर्टेड इनटू एसिटिल कोएंजाइम ए इन द सेकंड स्टेप पायरुक एसिड इज कन्वर्टेड इनटू एसिटिल कोएंजाइम ए एंड इन द थर्ड स्टेप एसिटिल कोएंजाइम ए एसिटिल कोएंजाइम इज कन्वर्टेड इनटू एन एस टू एंड सीओ टू टू एन एस टू एंड टू सीओ टू दीज मॉलिक्यूल्स आर प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम द पायरुक एसिड ओके एसिटिल कोएंजाइम ए and two molecules of pyruvic acid is again converted into pyruvic acid converted into acetyl coenzyme a and that acetyl coenzyme a it will enter that acetyl coenzyme a will enter into pyruvic acid it will uh, when it will convert into the coenzyme acetyl coenzyme a two molecules of nadh to and two molecules of co2 are produced okay next thing next step we are going to study and that next step is there uh krebs cycle or you can say tricarboxylic acid cycle next first step is the glycolysis second step we are going to study that one is there tricarboxylic acid cycle tricarboxylic acid cycle tca cycle you can say we cycle TCA. So, second step into the cellular respiration in that aerobic respiration. In that second step, we there that one is there tricarboxylic acid cycle. Also, you can say TCA cycle. TCA cycle. Also, this TCA cycle is also called as a Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle, because it was discovered by Hans Krebs. Krebs cycle, TCA cycle was discovered by Hans Krebs. So, Krebs cycle it is also called as, and for that uh, Krebs cycle he got Nobel Prize. So, in the tricarboxylic acid cycle, first point is there. in the first point both the molecules in the glycolysis final product of pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl coenzyme a and when pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl coenzyme a at that time two molecules of nadh2 and two molecules of co2 are produced so after that whatever acetyl coenzyme a these are produced these are entering into the mitochondria in krebs cycle two molecules of acetyl coenzyme a enters into mitochondria it enters into the mitochondria that means tca cycle is operated in mitochondria tca tca cycle is operated in mitochondria it is operated in mitochondria third point is there and in the third point acetyl part of the coenzyme a acetyl part of the coenzyme a is completely oxidized completely oxidized okay and in the cyclic process that acetyl part of the coenzyme is completely oxidized and from that uh, molecules of co2 h2 nadh2 and fadh2 are produced so acetyl part acetyl part of coenzyme a is oxidized and which which molecules are produced in that uh, co2 h2 o nadh2 and fadh2 are produced oxidize and co2 then h2 o nadh2 and fadh2 nadh2 and fadh2 these molecules are produced nicotinamide dinucleotide 
and the Levin dinucleotide amide dinucleotide. So NADH to and FADH to these molecules are produced. So after this, these are pro these processes takes place into the tricarboxylic acid cycle. It is also called as a Krebs cycle. And in that uh, two molecules of acetyl coenzyme enter into the mitochondria. And your TCA cycle is operated into the mitochondria. Third point is the acetyl part of coenzyme A is oxidized and it is converted into CO2, H2, NADH2, and FADH2. So, after this third step into the aerobic respiration, first one is their glycolysis, second one is their tricarboxylic acid cycle, and third one is their electron transfer chain reaction. Third one is their electron transfer chain reaction. Third one is their electron transfer chain reaction. Also, you can say ETCA, ETCR, electron transfer chain reaction. So in that point wise we will study in case of the electron transfer chain reaction whatever molecules of NADH2 and FADH2 are produced into the glycolysis and into the TCA cycle they will enter into the they will take part into the electron transfer chain reaction so molecules of NADH2 and FADH2 produced in glycolysis and TCA cycle take part in electron transfer chain reaction electron transfer chain reaction second point is there in case of the second point from the NADH2 three ATP molecules are produced and from FADH2 two ATP molecules are produced so from NADH2 two ATP sorry from NADH2 three ATP molecules are produced from NADH2 3 ATP molecules are produced and from FADH2 2 ATP are produced these are produced 2 ATP molecules are produced and after this next thing is the <coughs> uh, electron transfer chain reaction it occurs in mitochondria electron transfer chain reaction occurs in mitochondria it occurs in the mitochondria and fourth point is there so when a electron transfer chain reaction takes place in that not only ATP molecule but in along with ATP molecule from the glucose glucose is oxidized and from that uh, <coughs> not only ATP molecule is produced along with ATP, CO2 and H2 molecules are produced in ATCR in case of the electron transfer chain reaction glucose molecule in these three steps glucose molecule is completely oxidized and not only ATP but CO2 and H2 are, are also produced are also produced so next part we'll study in next video